Welcome to the Academic Writing Amplified podcast. On this podcast, we believe that the culture of academia needs to change radically. Women and non-binary people are revolutionizing academia within institutions that were not built for us. If you're ready to reject the culture of overwork, kick guilt and overwhelm to the curb and amplify your voice to make a real impact on your field without breaking down or burning out, you're in the right place. With our team of experienced writing coaches as co-hosts, we'll share insights and talk to inspiring guests to bring you the practical strategies, systems, and mindset shifts you need to find time to write, publish work you love, and design your career on your terms. And it all starts with writing. Let's go. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Academic Writing Amplified. I'm your host, Kathy Mazak, and I'm so excited to be talking to you in 2024, getting ready for an amazing new year. So today I want to talk about something that I realized while I was doing some calls, uh, enrollment calls for our Navigate program. And I wanted to make sure that everybody who listens to this podcast kind of understands the relationship between writing and career. And you may have Well, probably you came to the podcast through a recommendation, which thank you so much if you recommend this podcast to others. You might have come to the podcast by searching academic writing in your podcast app. So of course, the podcast is called Academic Writing Amplified, and it is purposely called that that, so that if you search academic writing in your favorite podcast app, Hopefully, our podcast comes up as number one. Now, why do I talk about writing all the time? I talk about writing all the time because when you are thinking, I have a time to write problem, right? Like I have a problem finding time to write. When you have that thought and then you put it in, you know, then you search and you get the Academic Writing Amplified podcast. Or you search books and you get my appropriately titled Making Time to Write book, which is available in all the places. (laughs) The feeling that you don't have time to write is the triggering event that makes you go and seek help. So there's like this relationship between time to write and clogged up pipeline. So what you really want when you're trying to get time to write what you're really trying to do is like clear that pipeline, right? Like, oh man, I have all these things backed up. I have this thing I really want to get out and I just don't have time to write. That's why I have a clogged up pipeline. That's normally like, or usually the thinking that gets people to find our work at Scholar's Voice, right? My book, this podcast, our programs. But Once you get inside, once you read the book, or if you look across all the titles of the over 200 episodes of this podcast, you will notice that, yes, there's a lot of titles that talk about writing and publishing, but there's also really a lot of career advice or ways to think about your career in general. And that's because a clogged up pipeline, which is making you think, oh, the solution to my problem is I need time to write. That's how you find the podcast or the book or whatever. That series of thoughts is actually a symptom of a larger problem. If you have a clogged up pipeline, I know that what you think your problem is, is that you need time to write. And I'm happy to tell you like, you know, here, read Making Time to Write or listen to the podcast or take my Navigate program. But what you will quickly find out when you enter, for example, Navigate or when you pick up the first few chapters of the book, it's not just about time because the thing that drew you to think it was about time is actually the symptom of a bigger career problem. So your clogged up pipeline is actually 
a symptom of a career problem. Your writing problem or your time to write problem is actually a career problem. And that is why I say that Navigate is a career program disguised as a writing and publishing program. Because what you're feeling stress around or the way that your career problem is manifesting itself is through a clogged up pipeline. And you think that the solution is, I need better time management, I need higher productivity, I need to make time to write. But actually, you have a bigger, deeper problem, and it is a career problem. So let me explain about that so that you can think about, okay, how are these things, writing, publishing, career, all related to each other. And then where is the point? And this is what I really want you to think about. Where is the point of entry for me in order to solve my clogged up pipeline problem? So if Kathy's saying it's not just time to write, it's bigger than that. Well, what you need to do, right, is solve the root cause of the problem, not just the symptom. So let me give you some examples of like solving for the symptom. So you have this clocked up pipeline and you think I need time to write. And so here's how you try to solve for that symptom, especially at the beginning of the year. (laughs) You get out your calendar and you're like every Friday or every other Friday, I am going to write and you block off that time on your calendar. And that might be fine. That might work for you for one Friday, (laughs) but you haven't solved the root of your problem. And so you're not going to be able to hold on to that writing time. Like the idea is there. It's like, okay, I just need some hours and I just need them in a certain way. Like I need them in blocks or, you know, I need the whole Friday or I'll make a writing retreat. This is something that people sometimes do. I'll go away for two or three or five days And I will, you know, just hole up and write. And again, you're addressing the symptom of a deeper problem. So you might see some headway, but you might also just end up on that retreat. You're so exhausted from the root cause of the problem, which I am getting to, (laughs) but you're so exhausted from the root cause of the problem that you don't get the writing done. You read you rest, which is what you kind of really need to do, but you're not solving the clogged up pipeline problem that way because the clogged up pipeline, the root of that problem is not actually time to write, no matter how much you think it is. And listen, I've sold all those books and I've had great success with, we have over, I don't even know, some ridiculous number of hundreds of thousands of downloads on this podcast because people are looking for time to write. But I'm telling you, it is not about time to write. That is what you think the solution is. But actually, it's a deeper problem. So let's talk about what is that deeper problem that's causing your pipeline to get clogged up and then how to solve that problem. So if it's not with blocking writing time, then what is it, right? So your clogged up pipeline is actually the symptom of a career problem. And it's just that You haven't developed the skills that you need to manage the complexity and I almost want to say like the rigor or the pressures or the the heft, the weight of the academic career. This is totally understandable, right? Because nobody teaches you how to do it. You probably have rather poor role models when it comes to managing work versus outside of work things. Your advisor may have been able to be like hugely successful in terms of like what is deemed success in academia, but maybe they did it in ways that you know you don't want to do or that you think this is the only way, right? And those ways are through overwork, through driving yourself into the ground to the point of exhaustion, to working nights and weekends, you know, all of that culture of busy, right? Glorification of busy that 
is part of how many people handle the rigorous demands of the academic career. So it's not like it shouldn't be surprising that you have this career problem that actually causes you to have the backed up pipeline and then seek a writing time related solution. Because the real thing that you have to figure out in your career, nobody talks about. (laughs) And that thing is discernment. What really is going to solve your pipeline problem, it's going to give you time to write and it will solve your career problem is discernment. Okay, well, what do I mean by this, right? (laughs) What I mean is that the skill you need to develop is discerning what are the opportunities that are going to build what I really want for myself and what are the opportunities that aren't, okay? But having that discernment, right, that key thing, like what do I say yes to, what do I say no to? How do I put boundaries around my time? Like, how do I use my time, my best resource, my time and energy? How do I discern, okay, this project gets this amount and this project gets this amount? That discernment is the absolute key. That's your career problem. You haven't developed the necessary discernment or you think you have discernment, but you're not using the criteria for discernment that is actually based in your academic mission and your values, both things, your academic mission and your values. So in order to have discernment, you need to kind of like have some tools available to you or know, like, what am I trying to create? Okay. So what do you want for your career? It's a real question. Think about it. What do you want for your career? When you imagine an ideal career for yourself, what does it look like? How many hours are you working? Where are you working? Who are you working with? What kind of resources are available to you? Those are the things that you need to think about when I ask you what you want for your career. What kind of impacts are you making? Your work is making what kind of change in the world, okay? All of those things, the whole thing, what it is like to live out your career, you need to have a sharp, clear picture of what that looks like for you. And most of us, what we're doing is we are just using the models that we see. So we're looking and we're saying, well, my advisor stayed in the lab until 11 p.m. My advisor was answering emails at 10 a.m. on a Saturday. And you're taking that as like, well, my advisor was successful. And I don't mean to say I'm using advisor as an example. You could put some other colleague that you see, you know, that you're like, well, that's my a successful colleague. That's like, you know, who I want to be or what I want to be like, or that's what I have in pictured in my mind as a successful career or as what I want. If you're operating with that, you will replicate that. So you have to be able to imagine what you actually want for your career and who you want to be as an academic. If those things are clear, then you can develop discernment. You can say yes to the things that you know will help you build that. But what you're doing right now probably is saying yes to everything that looks like an opportunity And you're just like, oh, that looks like an opportunity. And because you probably have honed your ability to see opportunity, that's how we get this like overclogged amount of things and saying yes. That and fear, a fear of letting somebody down, of disappointing, of being seen as not collegial, like those kinds of things, like fear of what other people are going to think if you say no. If you're operating like that, if you're just seeing everything as opportunity, if you're not discerning, then that will slow down your progress on your publication pipeline because you don't have any discernment around how you invest your time. You're not thinking ahead to what you want to create and then actively making choices to bring that 
creation about. Instead, you're like, this is what it is. I'm just going to take whatever opportunities I can, or I'm afraid to say no, so I won't. And that lack of discernment leads to the publication pipeline being clogged. It leads to your schedule so overscheduled that you don't have time to write. It leads to just too much. And guess what? You don't have to do that. (laughs) Now that you know, right, that discernment, that you actually have a career problem and that career problem can be solved through honing your discernment, then you don't have to suffer from the clogged up pipeline that is holding you back from promotion, is holding you back from grants, is holding you back from the self-confidence you need to claim what you want in your career. And that is just keeping you band-aiding things. Like you think you're solving your problem with band-aids. So you will notice that circling back to the beginning of this episode, I titled my book, Making Time to Write. I title this podcast, Academic Writing Amplified. I call myself a writing coach. That's because the people who I know my work can help are in this little cycle. They're like, I have a clogged up publication pipeline, so I need time to write. Let me figure out who can get me time to write. And then they find me. But what I give you on this podcast and in my book and in Navigate is career altering advice. It is advice around discernment. That's the skills that we're really developing. When you're taking in the content on this podcast, YouTube channel, reading my book, or taking Navigate. So I want to say good job. Good job for identifying your problem, the clogged up pipeline, for trying to solve it in a logical way, which is I'll try to make more time to write, And for finding this podcast or any of my other work, because now you can get to the real root of the problem. You can get to changing your career so it is what you want. And for that, you need to know what you want and you need to develop discernment so that you can go and get it. If you would like help (laughs) with this process, besides listening to the podcast episodes and reading my book, Navigate is now open for enrollment. So I want to explain very carefully about the promise of the Navigate program, what the curriculum looks like, and how it is going to solve the root of your problem, not just put a Band-Aid on it. So our promise in Navigate is, one, that you will submit an almost done article by the end of the 12-week program. So that is what will happen during the 12 weeks that you take the program. You will submit an almost done article by the end. We help you choose which one of probably several. (laughs) We give you curriculum around moving it to completion. We write together during those 12 weeks. There's coaching that helps you keep moving forward and checklists and, you know, help around the things that are hurdles to really getting the things submitted, right? All of that is part of our program and you will submit your almost done article. We call it the low-hanging fruit by the end of 12 weeks. The secondary promise is that by doing that once, you will learn how to get to unclog your pipeline. You will learn how to publish your backlog of papers because that one paper that we focus on in the 12 weeks You use it like as a use case, you know, you're learning the techniques, you're learning the discernment that you need as you are implementing the curriculum, as you're moving that piece forward to submission so that you can then do that again. And so you will have learned what you need to learn. You might not have mastered it, but you will know what you need to know in order to publish your backlog of papers. So how do we do that? Like, what is the real meat of the Navigate curriculum. Well, Navigate works on several levels. I say level, but I don't know if that's really the word. (laughs) But anyway, first we start out at the high level, multi-project planning level. And that is, to me, the definition of the publication pipeline is a high level multi-project plan. So you will learn discernment around that high level project plan. Then 
you will start to work at the project level. So that's like the next kind of drilling down to the next level. And the project level is the writing project level. That's one article. In this case, your low hanging fruit article, but your one article. And what you'll learn there is breaking projects into tasks and estimating time to task and all those kind of skills that will help you move a project to submission. Then we work on your academic mission statement. And we wanted to kind of start with publication pipeline, then do project management, then do mission statement, because we want to kind of get you going on the promise of the program in the first few weeks before we turn to the career altering stuff. So the academic mission statement is a tool that we use to help you develop this discernment. Okay. It makes you create a statement, like a thesis statement for your career. It is like one sentence that can guide your career, but also will guide your publication pipeline and will guide your time management. Super, super important. This is exactly how discernment helps you unclog your pipeline. Because once you have clear the academic mission statement, we take you through a series of activities that make it so that you are implementing mission-centered, mission-driven time and project management. And that is discernment. That's what you need so that you can then start to actually make time on your calendar to write and hold on to it. So we have a lot of curriculum also about once you can do that, but you can't, you can't do it the opposite. We can't just put a time on the calendar and then it's expected to stick without discernment, like without the mission statement, without shaping and molding your career to be what you want it to be. Like it's just a band-aid if we don't do those things. So we get to the mission statement, we get to the ideal week and then creating those. So then we work on the multi-project level, high level pipeline, then project level. Then we look weekly. How are you managing your time? And then in a writing session, we drill down. How do you make writing sessions themselves sticky and fulfilling and flowy. And so that by the end of all of this, like we've worked on super high level project level time management for the week, and then management of your actual writing sessions. And you have really been, all of that is infused with decisions about how you want your career to be. And through that work, that is disguised as a writing program, disguised as a publication program, what you are actually altering is your career. And it's so much fun. (laughs) It's so much fun to watch. So we would love to work with you. And applications are open as you're listening to this podcast, if you're listening in real time. So you can go to scholarsvoice.org slash navigate, find the pink button at the top of the page that will say apply. If applications are closed, then it will say get on the wait list. So you'll want to do that. But if you're listening in real time, applications are open, scholarsvoice.org slash navigate. It's a quick five minute application starts you in our process, which includes an enrollment call with me. And I can't wait to talk to you. So navigate is a career program disguised as a writing and publication program. I can't wait to see you inside. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time supporting yourself and your writing by listening to this episode. If you like what you heard today, the best way to say thank you is to hop on over to Apple iTunes and write an honest review. The more reviews, the more amazing academic women and non-binary people will find this podcast. So go write one now. 